Hey guys, welcome to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. I'm Joe Klemzeski, founder of the Diet Doc, co-founder of NAMS, the National Academy of Metabolic Science, here with Dr. Corey Probst. Hello. Who is going to talk about, teach us how to eat in restaurants with others and yeah. all of the things that come with that kind of pressure and decision making. I think it's that phrase, with others, <laughs> kind of makes the big difference for a lot of people. For, for a lot of people, it's going to the restaurant and experiencing temptations. Foods they don't typically eat, the smells are you know, really fragrant, there's lots of fried yumminess there. And, um, and then on the other side of it is when there's people there who may be pressuring them or they feel pressured by them in some way. Goodness, haven't I experienced that? Joe, I remember when I was still living in Evansville and we were eating with, it was a fairly large group of people. Maybe it may have been um, clients and friends and <laughs> we'd finished a dinner and we'd gotten just a bunch of desserts and everyone was passing them around. And this woman hands me the plate and it's like, I, I can't even remember what the dessert was, but she's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. You have to try it. And I was not interested. I wasn't interested and it must not have been like a super decadent brownie or chocolate cake or something. I'm pretty particular about my desserts and just food in general. If I'm, if I look at it and I'm like, that doesn't even look good. I'm not, that, there's no temptation there. Right. Even if it's, something different that's never in my face. That's not tempting to me. But I was like, oh, no, thank you. I'm good. No, you really should try this. It's so yummy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really full, but thank you anyway. Are you sure it's so good? I'm like, how many freaking times do I have to say <laughs> no thank you before you like push the plate the other way around the table? And so I can see how sometimes it can get, it can feel complicated. It can feel complex. You don't want to let people down. <laughs> you want to feel connected and do what the rest of the group is doing. But um, I think part of it too is just we need to learn whether there's, is there that internal pressure or this belief that we have to be a certain way to please other people? Or is it, I mean, is it that external pressure and how do we want to kind of manage that? <laughs> Have you had experiences like that eating out? Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because I, I was just pressured into having a, a, a margarita the other night, oh. and, uh, which, you know, it's not, not exactly a hard sell, but, um, but that no, it's is, funny because yeah. people for those situations, like a friend was taking me out for a late birthday dinner. He, mm -hmm. he, you know, missed the opportunity to, to take me out. And so wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And so he, he just wanted to make sure this is a, you know, great time, have whatever you want. Let's go enjoy this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good on the drink. He's, no, 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 you should, you should have one, have one. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> oh, I have one. He's like, oh, have another one, have another one. My wife said, Yo, go ahead, have another one. Um, so, so no, even with good intentions, sure. um, and, and I, and it was your a part or, or the other person's part. Yeah. Fantastic time and all that, but just e even with something that's very generous and gift oriented, it can yeah. be like, yeah, really was okay, but felt like you have to kind of oblige. Totally. I was having lunch with a friend of mine last week and we were at this pretty high end restaurant and she likes these oysters like I think they're called oysters Rockefeller and they're, <laughs> they're oysters covered in like cheese and bacon. And like, for one thing, I don't even like oysters, yeah. but she's like, Oh yeah, let's get the, let's, let's like us, let's get the oysters Rockefeller. They're so good. So they come to the table and she's like, these are so yummy. Like go for it. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I grabbed one. I took one and I ate one of the oysters Rockefeller. And as How I was it? it, I'm like, this, just swallow it, Corey. This is what's going on in my head. Just swallow it. Just, just finish it. But then when she was like, are you, do you want another one? Go ahead and have another one. Like I had no qualms in saying, no, I'm really good. Thank you. 
they're all yours. But it was, yeah, there was that moment where I'm like, I just consumed probably five to 10 grams of fat in that one gross <laughs> oyster thing. <laughs> what a freaking waste. But there was a sense of pressure there. In other situations, Joe, I don't, um, I don't have a hard time saying just no thank you and that being it. No, I'm good. Thank you. No thanks. I'm great. No, I'm full. Like however many times I have to flip and say it. But typically, if a person is conscious, like the person you're eating with, and you say no five times, they stop. And I recognize that it's more about them at that point than them wanting me to actually enjoy what I'm eating. You know what I mean? So I, I will have to say, because I want to I wanna be the you know, devil on one shoulder and you sure. can be the angel on the other. Yeah. I was thinking about this just this morning, uh, answering some, some social media messages. And you do have to, at some point, come down on, on a side mm -hmm. and decide what you're going to do in those situations. But the other option is not necessarily bad. Like in my case... The, the joy that it gave my friend in feeling like he gave me something I really enjoyed. He knows I like tequila, we're in a great restaurant, mm -hmm. and it just wouldn't have been a complete birthday meal if Joe didn't mm -hmm. have some tequila. So mm -hmm. for me, suffering through a margarita <laughs> was, uh, you know, was worth you know, having him feel like it was really a nice gift. And so that is, that is absolutely part of this equation, but if you have health goals or, or body composition goals, then absolutely, you know, make those decisions ahead of time and live by them because this is the same guy that I learn a lot from when it comes to discipline because every time I go out to eat with him, he instantly just cuts his meal in half, puts half of it aside and takes it home because he knows. Know what we're talking about Joe and I have a story about this guy too. Yeah. So, you know, that's just part of his discipline. It doesn't matter yeah. how hungry he is, what he wants, how decadent the meal is, a restaurant. It's just, that's the rule. That's the, the decision that's been made. And he lives a very healthy, consistent life by doing that. And that part of his discipline, and I, let's call it a foundational principle in terms of the way that he eats, it's not affecting you. Right. So like, we can all have principles like that that we recognize aren't going to affect other people. In other regards, we're just going to have to be okay with, this might affect them, but my intention isn't to hurt them, hurt their feelings, but it is, it can be, it can be dicey. You no, know, Ben and I were out to breakfast the other day and we, like, we've talked about it. He knows what I prefer, the way that I think about food. I'm thinking five steps ahead. We're at breakfast and I'd ordered and he'd ordered and then he was like, do you want to get some pancakes to share? And I was like, I'm thinking, well, I already have sourdough toast. I have refried beans with my breakfast, a ton of veggies with my egg whites. I'm like, they would taste really good and I like trying new things at, at places we've never been, except I'm only going to want one bite just to try it and then you're going to eat the rest and then mm -hmm. you're going to feel too full too. And so we're like having this discussion in the restaurant. We can have that discussion though. We're not going to do that with a lot of the other people that we're eating around. So, you know, it's. Kind of kills the mood there, Corey. You just yeah. killed the moment. Right. Maybe I did hurt his feelings. <laughs> you hurt my feelings that you didn't get pancakes with me. <laughs> That's a legitimate consideration. Right. And I probably err, well, I don't know if I err, but I aim for the side of this is what's important to me. And this is, I don't want to feel overly stuffed and feel guilty that I made that concession. And so I won't do it. And you, I think, are on the other side of that a lot more than I am. Most times, for sure. I would <laughs> err on the side of making sure the other person is happy and, and just, you know, social ambiance. I, I definitely am 90% yeah. or more on that side. Yeah. And um, I will say that I've, I've slid your direction, but it's, yes. 
I know, right? You influenced <laughs> me. And I would say in a very positive way. But you know what else has changed? My goals. Hmm. And my it's just not that important to me anymore to have to be so rigid mm -hmm. about things. But I still want to listen to my body in that moment. And if I have one bite of pancakes and I'm like, oh my God, these are like the best pancakes ever. And then I'm like, but I'm so full, sweetie. Can we take the rest home? That's better than, you know, in my mind, I'm going to have five bites of pancakes because I feel obligated to make him happy. And then I'm beating myself up for the rest of the day because I have ate more than I needed to. And I heard the voice that said, stop now, be your full, but it didn't listen to it. Yeah. You know, I was, I had another conversation just this morning <laughs> with a, a friend of mine who's a psychologist at Harvard and we were having this discussion about, you know, how much do you, do you want to put into those little details and track your food? And, and he's putting it in a, in a framework of psychology and mm. what he might tell clients and other aspects of their lives. And I said, you know, I, absolutely, we want some flexibility and you yeah. don't want to be stuck in these rigid rules. But this is an objective thing. You know, energy balance is very objective. And if you do have body composition goals, if you want to lose even just five or 10 pounds, you're going to make it so much easier on yourself if you are completely aware mm -hmm. of the physiology, the chemistry, the mathematics of what you're doing, because mm -hmm. then you can manage it. It just becomes so simple. That's what tracking macros is all about. Yeah. Even if you're in a restaurant, just yeah. being aware, you know, the, the closer you are to that finite awareness, the easier it is to manage. Yeah, I agree, Joe. So on a practical note, you know, I do typically go in with a plan. I know what I've had before and I'm already thinking about what I may want or will have after. So what I recommend to a lot of my clients too is that they look at a menu beforehand. If you know where you're going to go out to eat and you know what you've had, you know where your macros are at, look at the menu beforehand and see if there are maybe two or three things that you might order and how you might tweak them. I'm looking for keywords on menus that indicate to me whether something is going to be, I'm usually, fat is the thing I look at first. I'll look for keywords on a menu that indicate high fat, <laughs> okay? Because that's what's gonna make something most calorically dense, especially in a restaurant. They don't care how much fat they're putting in things or sodium, but I'm not particularly concerned about sodium, but some of the people that I work with are. Fat number one, so I'm looking for things like cheese, eggs, fried, home fries, <laughs> hollandaise, sauce, okay? Most sauces are going to be thick and dense and, and creamy, but you can ask, like, is this a broth-based sauce or is this a creamy sauce? Dressings, gravy, smothered, wet. <laughs> a wet burrito is smothered in something, typically. Um, avocado, guacamole, buttery, crispy. So I'm looking for things like that, and then I'm asking, how might I tweak that? Is that something that I could get either like broiled or baked or grilled rather than, you know, fried or dunked or <laughs> there's another keyword dunked um battered and then sauces too ask for sauces on the side um you know when i went out to lunch with my friend i got this grilled chicken salad i happen to love salads a lot of people go out to restaurants and they're like why would i get a salad at a restaurant i eat salads all the time but i like to see how the restaurant makes the salad that's fun for me. Maybe I'll get some new ideas. Probably not because I'm like the salad queen, but <laughs> I like to experiment. And it came with bacon and, um, you know, usually restaurants put the dressing right on the salad and it came with avocado. And I knew when I went in, because this restaurant has really good bread, that I'm going to be eating maybe one to two slices of bread. I had the room and I would probably put, be putting a little bit of butter 
on that bread. So leave the bacon off. Please bring me just like, I don't need a bunch of creamy dressing. Do you have just red wine vinegar that you can bring me? No fat in that, barely any carbohydrates. So these are the sorts of things that I'm thinking about in terms of balancing the meal out so that I don't leave there like, okay, I can't eat or I can't eat anything for the rest of the day. I used all of my macros in that one meal. But at the same time, I've made it very enjoyable for myself. It doesn't need to feel like depriving when we go to restaurants. And we can tweak the before and after meals as well in order to allow that restaurant meal to be a little bit, you know, more decadent. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I, I do the same thing with fat as I go in a restaurant. I know mm -hmm. I, I can control just by what I'm visually seeing, how much carbohydrate I'm consuming. Yeah. But man, you can, you can triple or quadruple fat in a heartbeat oh, in a restaurant gosh. if you're not, if you're not careful. And that's, that's where most of the damage is done, to be honest. You know, <laughs> when we look at, you know, Western diets and, and obesity. But. So awesome, awesome ideas, Corey. Thank, Thank you, you for that. You are welcome. And um, I've, I've got a couple more podcast ideas coming up for this week, guys, that you might be interested in. So stay tuned. We appreciate you watching and listening, and we will catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.